So this is about 1.5 primary market research methods and their benefits. So for this particular one, little acronym that I use is FOCUS, but obviously we add in the Q for questionnaire. So it's FOCUS, but with QU questionnaire. So this is the way that I use to remember these five different examples. Primary research is sometimes called field research, and that's because literally people go out into the field when they call it like a field trip it means you go outside you go out to do it yourself so whether that means physically or you do it digitally it can be either way but sometimes it can be called field research so there's five different ways that we can do this focus groups observations consumer trials questionnaires and surveys first one we're going to look at focus group so this is literally where you get a group of people together and focus on what they think. So you can decide who to put in that focus group. You can basically think, right, who's our target market? Let's get some of those people together that fall under that category and we'll ask them what they think about our product or about what we want to do. So the advantages are you can obviously specifically select who you want to be in the group. It allows you for in-depth insights. So if you ask a particular question, you can develop that question and delve deeper into what that person thinks. So they might give a particular response that you weren't expecting and you can add further questions to find out more. Focus group are also very engaging and it's also hard to get misinterpreted because you can ask people for further clarification. Disadvantages of focus groups, they can be quite pricey because you're usually going to have to pay people to participate. Participants are likely to be influenced by other individuals in the group. So sometimes you might have a dominant character in the group that could influence some of the other people in there. The other disadvantage is only certain people from a market could be targeted. So you might find it difficult to get everybody in your target market in the group. Next, we look at observations. So literally, it's exactly what it sounds like. You are observing people. So this tends to be done in businesses like shops where the staff might observe what they see in front of them. They might observe people's reactions to prices, observe their reactions to sales and advertisements within the store, that kind of thing. Now, it could also be done in person or by looking at CCTV. And it can also be done by observing people's buying records so kind of looking at what people's order histories are and looking at what people with uh, club cards might be buying in a supermarket and so on so the best thing about observation is it allows you to see people's true reactions a lot of the time they don't know that you're looking so you can see their true behavior they can be quick because you can make notes very very quickly and find out a lot of information they can be cheap because it can be run by your own staff it's very easy to obtain information. You can find out a lot from watching things. Disadvantages, people might not agree with you observing them if they were to find out. If they do find out or know that you're observing them, sometimes your data could be invalid. And observers must understand exactly what they're looking for rather than just stand around idly. Next, we look at consumer trials. So this is where you might give someone a sample of a product. And when you give them that sample, they would try it and give you feedback upon that product. These are often used for things like Netflix, where you might be given a one month trial because it can let people see what it's like. And then once you've experienced it, you might not want to lose that particular product. So you will keep paying the, the fee that you need to pay. So consumer trials allows for in-depth insights into key questions. So you can basically Give a question about a particular product and you can get real in-depth uh, responses because people have experienced the product. It can also give an insight as to whether it's popular and would actually sell. So if you created samples of food, for example, and it was really popular, then you could decide that you're going to sell them. Another advantage is you can receive extremely useful and critical feedback. You can see people faces when they're eating the samples you can ask them questions about it and so on 
and obviously the location and duration can be chosen by you so you can choose how much you want to give you can choose how long you want the sample to be etc negatives are anyone who doesn't actually uptake the product is lost money so if you give samples away for free you are essentially losing money if they don't buy the product the same with netflix if you give someone a month for free and they don't keep it up then you've lost that basically service for a month obviously you've got wasted product as well if you create a load of samples and no one eats them or no one wants them then you've wasted your products questionnaire is next i've left these two till last because you need to understand the difference between the two questionnaires and surveys questionnaires are the actual questions that you come up with so these could just be written on a piece of paper what questions are we going to ask that is your questionnaire it's the actual thing that you will give out to people so the advantages are you can come up with your own questions very flexible you can decide what you want to ask you can do them paper-based or online and you can use a variety of different questions open questions like where people can give any feedback that they want, closed questions where you give them possible answers. Disadvantages, some people don't actually fill them in properly. Sometimes it takes practice and thought to come up with a decent questionnaire. And they can also be really time consuming as well. Finally, we've got surveys. Now the difference between a survey and a questionnaire is that the survey involves the entire process. So that means coming up with the actual questions, giving the actual survey out, whichever method that you use, collecting all the responses and doing some sort of analysis. So a survey always includes the analysis part. So a survey is confidential. Anything that you gather, you can keep confidential because it's within your business. It can be conducted remotely because you can do it digitally if you want to, you can do it online. You can carry it out in different ways. So obviously we said you can do it on paper, you could do it online, you could do it in all sorts of different ways, whether it's through an online survey or different forms that you give out. And finally, disadvantages. We are basically relying on people being honest when they fill in these questionnaires, when they fill in the answers. If they give irrelevant data or unclear data then it doesn't really help you another thing is that the questions need to be clear otherwise people won't know what to write as an answer and also you might get limited responses people might not fill it in very detailed last thing i want to cover is qualitative versus quantitative you just need to know the difference between Nick, these two things so qualitative is when the feedback you receive is in more depth as in you've got more quality feedback so this is where you look at the reasons why a customer thinks a certain response. An example of this would be like a written review about your product or service. Quantitative is when the feedback you get can be counted numerically. It usually uses closed questions. So if you give people options like yes or no, then you can calculate how many people said yes, how many people said no. So it allows you to get a very quick, easy analysis but obviously doesn't give you massively clear responses. So that's the end of this video. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to email me and I'll get back to you.